Hello, today I'm gonna show you how to make a valuable and expensive tool with just a very economical part of a broken microwave. The first thing is to get a broken microwave. The cheapest one is not going to work. We don't need it to be any specific model as any will work. We can also directly buy a microwave transformer, but it costs practically the same. So I prefer to buy a whole microwave and have more parts to recycle. We will now begin disassembling our microwave. To do this, remove the screws located at the back or on the sides. These are common Phillips screws, as we all know. Then, we'll remove the cover by lifting it upwards or slightly backwards and upwards. It's easy to remove, and if you break it, it's not a problem, since that's why we bought it. Once disassembled, we'll see many parts that we can recycle or use, like the knob controllers. The key components we'll use are the magnetron, a powerful 220 volt fan, and the transformer. Uh, removing the transformer is very easy, it's just four screws that are on the back of the microwave. Remember to hold it while taking it out as it's heavy and could fall, breaking something. After loosening, remove any small latches or cables and take it out of the microwave. Cut the cable for reuse. Remove any parts you think are reusable, such as the capacitor, plate, motor and magnetron. The magnetron was broken, causing the microwave to malfunction. We'll investigate the reason. We also have our little lamp, which is a very good 220 volt lamp. We have the fan that I already told you is pretty good. It blows a lot of air. And our transformer, which we will use now. And it's one of the most important parts of the microwave as well. To simplify the work, we'll cut the wires coming out of the transformer. And then we're going to identify the windings. One is primary and the other secondary. The secondary, which is always on top, we'll try cutting it with anything, whatever is easiest. I tried with a small saw, I tried various methods but I think the best was drilling holes. As shown in the video, I drill a hole, let it go through to the other side with a fairly large bit. And then it becomes easier for me to remove the bits of cable with pliers or whatever you have on hand. Avoid damaging the winding underneath. The thicker one, as we will need it. To know if the primary winding, the one we are going to use, is in good condition. You can set your multimeter to continuity, measure the two outputs it has, and it should give you between 2 and 3 ohms. We are going to use a welding cable that is about 1 cm thick. Size doesn't matter much if yours is slightly bigger or smaller, but you have to make sure it goes well through our transformer. We're going to pass it a full turn, which would be to pass it once, return, and then pass it again. And return again. I don't know if I explained myself well, but it has to end up like in the video. Yeah, on one side there should be like two cables, as seen in the video, and on the other side just one and the two outputs of our cable. I also attached it to a piece of wood so it looks more presentable and the transformer isn't hanging. And I soldered some L's on the top part of the transformer so I could put a little rod that goes up and down as seen here in the video. With some copper nails, it's very important that they are copper because otherwise it won't work. You're going to prick the... Uh, wire we used, I mean you're going to nail it and then you're going to nail it into the wooden stick. That is a common wooden stick about 2 by 2 centimeters. You're going to do the same with the other end of the wire next to the wire you nailed before. Using the same plug wire that we recycled from our microwave, you're going to connect a wire to one of the pins of the back transformer. You only have two and the other one you're going to connect to a switch with another wire. Lastly. Apply tape on the exposed terminals to protect them. With that, the spot welder is complete. It's very simple to operate. I've already soldered one of the batteries I plan to use. Just give it a click or two as needed. The battery is now soldered with nickel tape. It can also be used to solder thin sheets or for fun. I recycled the microwave lamp and attached it to the two pins at the back to indicate when it's on or off, which is quite useful. Our spot welder is ready to assemble a battery bank, which I'll do in a future video. Subscribe to see it and what I do with it. Don't forget my other channel linked in the description where I upload inventions and crazy things. Check it out and consider subscribing if you like it. A hug. Bye.